professional perspective from a public health physician who is currently in Dublin, Ireland, on a conference, but has carved out time to attend to the situation in Niger in line of the recent cholera outbreak. We're now joined virtually from Ireland by Dr. Lazarus Ude Eze. Good morning to you, Dr. Laz. How are you doing? Hi, good morning, Vito. Nice to be with you. I'm good. Well, good to see you. Whilst I'm trying to hear you, uh, it's also important to take our, our viewers along. So let's uh, refer to some of the newspapers with the story in their focus this morning as it concerns the cholera outbreak situation in Nigeria. So this morning, we're told that uh, the death toll has risen to 37 by the Punch newspaper, whilst the Vanguard has also looked at the angle of the most recorded cases in Lagos at 401. Now, let's look at both of those papers before we get Dr. Laz's comments on the situation in Nigeria from a medical perspective. Now, on the Punch and Vanguard newspaper, you'd find the lead stories beneath the masthead. Cholera, death toll rises to 37 as Lagos records 401 cases. FG orders water analysis as outbreak spreads in Lagos, Ogun, Oshun, Cross River, activates emergency response. Five hospitalized on the vanguard newspaper similarity in that lead story only a few strap lines change the strap lines read lwc issues red alert over untreated water and circulation lagos island ikorodu etiosa worst heat psp on 24 hours waste evacuation no surge of cases in latsu says the chief medical director cmd while lagos is prone to cholera outbreaks says an analysis uh, let's get your thoughts, Dr. Lars. It's about why Lagos is most prone. We heard that Etiosa, Ikorodu, are some of the worst hit parts in Lagos. Why so, Dr. Lars? Twenty twenty-four, uh, Nigerians will be losing their lives to cholera. Is is a disease of poor sanitation. It's a disease of poor hygiene. It's a disease of uncleanliness. It's a disease of uh, underdevelopment. And Lagos is, you know, Nigeria's biggest city, Nigeria, a mega city, one of the top cities in the world. So it's even more shameful uh, to read about the residents of Lagos dying from uh, cholera. Having made that point, uh, Lagos is at the bank of Atlantic Ocean. So much water. We have the Lagos Lagoon. So uh, we have regular flooding in Lagos. So there is water in Lagos. The question is, why don't we have safe water for people to drink? Because how do people come about cholera? Caused by a bacteria known as Vibrio cholerae. And this bacteria is picked up from the environment, either through uh, contaminated water or contaminated food, you know, so it's, it's as simple as that. So why should we have contaminated water, not just in Lagos, but any part of Nigeria? This period is Lagos. Previous times, it wasn't Lagos, you know, so it could start from anywhere. So nobody is uh, that safe. The, the thing about communicable diseases or infectious diseases is when it begins, just one case that began uh, in, say, Metama area of Abuja, once someone picks the organism in, in Metama, the person gets to the airport, the person is not sick, he's still apparently healthy, but he has picked the organism, either from the environment, through food, uh, through hand, poor hand hygiene, picked it on a flight, lands in Victoria Island. They dealt with, with people, they take granite, take uh, corn and all of that. So some of those people that shaped with who didn't wash their hands also move some to a Kurodu, others to a Bado. They interact with people, those ones to Enugu, then to so this is how these things move. So before you know it, uh, some may get symptomatic, uh, others may not get symptomatic. Those, uh, some, their immunity could fight it off and uh, maybe they don't get sick. Others, 
they might get sick and start showing symptoms and some may die from it so for any kind of infectious disease it can move very fast just like in this case over 30 uh, states confirmed uh, i would argue that it's already in the 36 states it just uh, lagos might be having more cases because uh, in the past few years especially from the ebola experience lagos is one state that have strengthened its uh, uh, surveillance system its public health management system so you may actually be having more people dying in some other states but it's not being picked up because you only report what you're able to pick up so in a way it might look like it's worse in lagos but in the other way now looking at the epidemiology uh, it may also reflect that the, the lagos has better capacity to identify uh, to track this to diagnose cases and to report them states that have weaker capacity and i can argue that majority of the states in nigeria have very weak public health surveillance system you know so those ones might not be able to report them and you know for example there was one year uh, i think a few years ago that last half fever outbreak started in niger state you know people were dying and you know people were like what's happening so we're even alleging some mysterious illnesses until NCDC got reports, uh, sent some of the officials there and discovered what it was. It was a, you know, one of the biggest Lassa fever outbreaks in the country. So what, what we're talking about is public health must be strengthened and we should have the capacity to identify this case. But most importantly, we need clean and safe drinking water all over Nigeria. There's absolutely no reason why every home in Lagos should not be able to open up their tap and drink pipe bar water because the ocean is all over the place. Just simply to get the water, clean it up, make it safe for drinking, and make it available in the home of every resident of them. not just Lagos, but all states. Uh, by Elsa, especially many of these states that uh, around the Atlantic, Aquaibo, and indeed every state in Nigeria. We, at this moment, we should have safe drinking water accessible and available to any Nigerian. And for those who are, uh, uh, you know, in hard to reach areas where pipe bomb water may not be able to get to, there should be thoughts on regular basis. The way, you know, political actors play campaign jingles during election is the way we should be playing public health messages every day on all media platforms, especially government media, where a lot of propaganda is being done, you know, to praise political actors. Some of those times should be used to play public health messages on a daily basis until it begins to play in people's subconscious mind to be able to adopt uh, these practices of regular hand washing with uh, clean water and soap and also keeping their environment clean and observing uh, personal hygiene. Now, Doc, I must thank you for quite elaborately laying a background to this discussion, telling us the bacteria responsible for causing cholera and citing the issue of the Atlantic Ocean surrounding states like Lagos. Well, one point you raised which is pertinent to address is that despite huge investment from the government, in waterborne supply to houses. It almost feels like after the late 80s, late 90s, most persons growing up in Nigeria now do not know what it means to have waterboard services running into their compounds. Now, with this huge challenge on accessing safe drinking water, how does the government and well meaning individuals attend to this issue at hand? Now, Nigerians are resorting to installing boreholes out of pockets in whichever environments they find themselves where they reside yes thanks for that question uh, Bito. water god gave us water free of charge you know we just have the responsibility to to make it safe to to use uh, uh, unfortunately um this respect the reason we have government is for many of these services that might be more hectic you know to do an individual level and also knowing that the level of inequality and inequity that not everybody will be able to 
uh, afford some of these things is to prove make public services available you know just like good roads uh, power supply and water water is essential to life the sustainable development goal six focuses on water and sanitation with targets which nigeria signs up to uh, to meet this unfortunately we are the uh in terms of open defecation i think we have overtaken india india used to be number one in the world in terms of number of persons practicing open defecation unfortunately nigeria appears to be and, and, and nigeria appears to be winning gold medal and, and, and that indices of open defecation so the government must come in uh, to make safe water available and accessible to all in all major cities like you mentioned, I recall when I was in secondary school in the town Afiko in Aboyin State. There's, you know, water works. You used to have access to, uh, you know, pipe or water, even though it wasn't flowing on daily basis, but periodically, Abakliki used to have uh, water before the uh, creation of the state. But how many, uh, how many years after the creation of the state, for instance? with huge investment made in water. But right now, you can't open tap and have water flowing. The same in, in, in most parts of the country. So uh, it's a major public health intervention, and uh, it's something that should be prioritized, especially by the states. These actually state and local governments, the federal government could do the policies and all of that, but making water available should be a task that we as citizens should put on the table of governors. Sanitation is largely functions of local governments. You know, environmental cleanliness and sanitation is not just about collecting levies and tools from people all over the place. You know, we should be able to manage waste and also even use waste to create wealth, you know, the waste to wealth uh, cliche. So this, this should be made available. The sanitation facility is also a very important veto. In many public primary and secondary schools, we do not have functional clean toilets. I didn't just say toilet, I said functional, and it has to be clean, you know. So, and especially for males and females, and it has a lot of implications on the health. Sometimes these ailments are picked up in school, you know, someone from a very poor environment uh, where they are uh, practicing open defecation contracts or picks up uh, vibrio cholerae, the bacteria, and it could have as well be bacteria for typhoid, a virus that could cause Lassa or any other. We are discussing cholera today, but it's the same mechanism that many of these waterborne or food, uh, foodborne diseases are, 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 are gotten. And the person takes it to school, plays around with other kids, you know, uh, or, you know, picks it up in, in a very dirty toilet, and it's spread in school, and other children will take, take those bacteria back home, distribute within their families and neighborhoods, and this thing continues to spread. So every school should have functional toilets uh, and also clean toilets, separate for boys and girls, you know, and also hand washing facilities where children, children must play, it's part of their growth. So after that playing, they should. These buckets that is constructed with a tap with soap and make that available. So every school should have access to safe water, especially for drinking and for regular hand washing. Because you cannot be teaching children to be washing hands regularly in class and within the school they don't have facilities to practice it. If they are, you have facilities and they're always made to wash their hands, you don't even need to start teaching it. It, it becomes part of them and they grow up with it. So water, making it available at all levels, those in how to reach areas that should be taught, and also the, the facilities may, may provide that for, is really very crucial because it's going to save us a lot of money from paying out of pockets and uh, to treat these illnesses on an individual level. And also government having to spend so much money trying to contain outbreaks like this. Now, it's also important to mention beyond a call to action on the part of the government, the need for a change in our determinal behavior as people, highlighting the worrying statistics that Nigeria has now overtaken India, 
as uh, the country with the most number and cases of open defecation. I, I was quite disturbed when I discovered that even in the capital city of Abuja, you find persons openly defecating on major expressways, uh, some of whom are, uh, what they call them now, um, transport service providers. It it's so bad that at a city like this, we have those disturbing experiences. How much more in the hinterland areas? Do you think that uh, beyond the jingles which have advised that be, be played by the media, how do we address the need for an attitudinal change as a people to curb open defecation? Yes, it's, it's, it's very important. I'm happy you made that example of Abuja. Uh, before last year, uh, the, the area one part of Abuja, I know it's uh, on that bridge, very large uh, space and also a major a major hub uh, for transportation. You know, the, you, uh, even the drainage systems, you practically see feces, you know, littered all over the place, people urinating and everywhere will be smelly. But uh, something good that happened was that uh, last year there was this effort, to, you know, toilet was built. Uh, the On the one side of it, they moved some of uh, the vehicles with toilets uh, on, on, on two different sides. And that has kind of, you know, significantly reduced, if not having eliminated uh, the, the cases of open defecation happening within that area. So the point I'm trying to make is, is when you don't make certain facilities available, you know, it encourages behavior. Behavioral change is not just about education, which is extremely important to educate people, but you also make create the environment, social environment that makes practices that uh, you know very good habits makes it very easy. So in public places, toilets have to be provided in parks, in markets, and when you look at the traffic within the area, you also not just provide uh, these sanitation facilities, but it should be enough. You know, to, uh, for the population of people moving there. Because if you provide a toilet that would take 10 persons at a time, and maybe you have like an average of 30 persons needing to use it at a time, it means that while 10 goes in there, the other 20 will find a way to, you know, pass waste because they are not likely what to pull on their body or we will, we will on their body. You know, so. This thing has to be strategic. It's part of planning. Then again, for uh, waste management, if you're teaching people to dispose their waste properly and all of that, excellent. But you also have to make waste beings available. If you're in a school and you're teaching children, don't dispose things anyhow, don't litter the environment. And they don't have waste beings where just you look around, you have a waste in your hand. You, you put it in a bin, you know, it makes the practice easier. But if those practices are not there, like within Abuja cities, uh, within, within Abuja stand, like in many cities in the country, you don't easily find waste bins in public places, you know, where you could just drop your waste and move. So many times I will have to take my waste into my car because I've trained I sell a little waste anyhow. So I have waste, I take it into my car, I take it home and dispose, you know, which not many people will have that luxury because perhaps it's not everybody that I have a car they will, they will take it into. So we have to provide these public facilities and it's within the purview of the local government. You know, many times they use spaces they should use to provide these facilities and build shops. You see uh, some local government country space build 200 shops just to collect uh, money from the shops and build maybe two toilets for 200 shops. How does that operate? You know, so these, these things are crucial. We must intentionally make those facilities available that promotes the healthy behavior that we want people to invite. Now, let's also pick up another paper for the sake of our viewing audience. The Guardian newspaper this morning has called the situation a teen time bomb. Beneath the masthead on the Guardian newspaper this morning, you'd find that lead story, a ticking time bomb, 
how poor hygiene, food inflation complicates cholera outbreak. Now inserted just beneath that to your top left hand corner is a picture of the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Abayomi, with the splash story inserted. Cholera, death toll rises to 21 in Lagos as FG carries to test water samples. Now, Dr. Lars, it's on the effort by the government to test water samples. You were highlighting the mode of transmissions with a person's not properly observing proper hand hygiene, but on testing water samples, how much can this inform the government in curbing the spread of the current cholera outbreak? Yes, uh, testing water samples is part of contact tracing. Uh, because when you, you, you identify, uh, you know, when you have an outbreak like this, you want to know where it's coming from. When you tackle it from the roots, you know, you solve the problem. So you don't focus on treating the symptoms, waiting for people to, to you know, fall sick and go for treatment. You also want to identify where is this coming from. So from testing those samples uh, from different locations, different sources, they'll be able to identify which of these samples uh, may be laden with uh, vibrio cholerae. Also note that with over 400 persons uh, in cases identified, you know, from person to person, this uh, organism is also spreading because for those who are symptomatic, uh, they vomit, they poo, and all these are going to the environment. And it's not all of them, you know, that have, uh, you know, toilets where they, uh, you know, they, where they pass these uh, liquids. So there are locations in Lagos where people, you know, live in floating community that is uh, just by the water uh, bodies. So there are some slums. There are also some highbrow areas, you know, where the kind of water coming out, the colors, even the WC, sometimes yellowish, sometimes uh, brownish, and all of that. So it's, it's crucial that they identify these sources. And for the places where it's confirmed, that's not just uh, cholera organism, but also other organisms that could cause illness, you know, it, it will be part of the effort to, uh, you know, to interrupt the spread of, of these organisms and also make people healthier. I, I, I so wish because uh, Lagos is at the level of uh, London, is at the level of uh, you know, me the mega cities in the world. Uh, if you, you could talk about uh, New York City, if you talk about, if you talk about uh, Paris, you know. So when Nigerians uh, tend to begin to compare Lagos with uh, other states, uh, I feel they don't do good justice to Lagos. So it's, 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 it's our biggest city, it's a mega city, and it should live up to that standard in all ramifications. You know, it's, 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 it's something of shame to hear that, oh, you have cholera outbreak in some of the biggest cities in the world. So every home in Lagos should be able to open up tap and uh, have safe water to drink. And it should be a reference point uh, for the rest of the country. Now, Lagos has been highlighted as a reference point by Dr. Lazudeze, a public health physician currently in Dublin, Ireland this morning. And now for our viewing public, let us also visit the ex-handles of the Lagos state government, and particularly that of uh, Professor Akina Bayomi, the Commissioner of Health in Lagos, where more infographics have been highlighted to guide Nigerians on what cholera is, and steps to prevent some of the spreads while also giving us a perspective of the contact tracing and efforts on ground so far. Uh, let's look at those infographics greeting our screens this morning and also the reference tweets as it concerns this conversation on hand. Now, the first slide has the subject update on cholera outbreak in Lagos. Now, highlighted in number one is that the Lagos state government has confirmed the cholera outbreak is causing severe gastroenteritis. Number two is that the Public Health Emergency Operations Center activated at Mainland Hospital Yaba is fully operational to attend to cases. Thirdly, there have been 350 suspected cholera cases in 29 wards with 17 confirmed cases and 15 fatalities. 
fourthly, cholera subtype 01 has been identified, which is known for more severe diseases. Now, doctor, let me come to you and let's look to pick up on these issues as highlighted by the updates we have coming in from Lagos. Number one, it is says to cause severe gastroenteritis. Uh, for the layman watching this morning, could you further break it down? Gastro associated to the abdominal region, uh, but what does this entail? Yes, uh, gastroenteritis is, is a medical word used to describe, uh, you know, inflammation of the gastro speaks to the stomach. Enteritis, enteric uh, speaks to the intestine. So it just uh, speaks to inflammatory uh, reactions that happens around the uh, stomach and the, involving the stomach and the intestine, which is responsible for uh, the, the symptoms you get to observe vomiting and uh, uh, stooling. So and I must commend uh, the uh, Lagos State Minister of Health. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, I think 2022, uh, uh, we National Advocates for Health, which I'm a member, we paid a visit to, to Lagos. We visited uh, the commissioner and we were able to uh, get some updates on this, you know, some of the surveillance and health security interventions and how the state has made some progress. So the emergency operations center being activated in Yaba uh, is, is, is quite a good one. And I, I was expecting that each of the states, because uh, over 30 states have been affected, you know, well, which updates are we getting from the other states? This should be a norm. I, I think River States also has been quite proactive. I don't know if there's any confirmed case in Rivers. The last time I checked, there was no case in Rivers, but they were making updates. I was reading that in uh, the social media platforms as well, trying to create awareness, you know, for people that, oh, there's cholera outbreak in the country. We've not identified any case, but everybody should take measures uh, to ensure that uh, we remain safe and healthy. So that's public health. Communication is a, re a huge component of it. Response, you know, you communicate everything because this is notifiable disease. Cholera is one of those diseases that is considered notifiable. That just one case is considered as an outbreak because that one case, if it's not well handled, could become a million cases just within a few weeks. So uh, that's is good that this uh, public information is being put out there and daily updates because that's what's necessary and every state that is uh, not able to do this in response to an outbreak has so much work to do in in, in their public now, health response now we're also told that uh, the type that has been observed is the cholera subtype 01 and it's known as one of the severest ones i don't know can you further educate our viewers this morning on the types and why this is considered more severe Yes, um, we, without having to go to scientific, you know, you, you have uh, different subtypes of these organisms uh, with varying degrees of severity, you know, based on the, the behavior of the organism. So uh, the experts, the scientists do carry out these studies to know, okay, yes, vibrio cholera is the cause. But which variant of uh, vibrio cholera is it one that, or oh, if you get it, the the, the chances that uh, the system, the immune system could fight it uh, is not is, is minimal, or is it the one that all oh, uh, it, it could get severe? So the subtype zero one is, is quite severe, which sends signal that we should even be more careful not to get it because it means that the possibility of uh, you know dying from it or having severe symptoms is higher. So for the purpose of public education, I think that's what we need to know that the strain that identified is quite severe and it means that we need to be more cautious. It means that we have to, on a regular basis, adhere to the strict measures to prevent this, which is to uh, ensure that we have uh, water hygiene, uh, water safety, the water we are taking is uh, drinking is safe. We have uh, good sanitation around us, our environment, our immediate home, and we practice hand hygiene. And we ensure that the food we take is well cooked. If you must take salad, vegetables, and things that you know might not be cooked, 
make sure that the water you use to wash it is also clean, safe water. You know, so these are some key measures that should not only be what we do now, but what we do on a more regular basis. Those who are in places where they don't have access to safe drinking water, perhaps they are unable to afford uh, uh, bottled water or, you know, there are ways you could treat the water, you know, and local government health officials, this is a time to get busy in going to communities, community in the languages they understand and teach them how to make their, their, their water quite safe for use. And especially for, uh, uh, you know, for, for the children because they are much more vulnerable uh, for, for this kind of severe uh, strain of vibro, uh, vibro cholerae. Now let's look at the accompanying slide and then we'll talk about some ways that uh, people in hinterland areas can purify their water. In the accompanying slide on the updates for the cholera outbreak in Lagos, you'd find items as itemized by number 5, 6, 7, and 8. Number 5 says, case numbers vary daily. Some areas see a declining uh, situation while others find new cases. Number 6 says, the Environmental Health and Environmental Protection Agency is saddled with the responsibility of inspecting water, food, and beverage samples. Number 7, cholera kits oral rehydration solutions and public health education campaigns have been deployed in an attempt by the Lagos State Government to forestall a further spread. And lastly, number eight, high-level meetings held with Nigeria's Center for Disease Control, World Health Organization, WHO, and other partners are ongoing. Now, it's been about water purification, and whilst a lot of persons have looked for uh, homemade solutions, it's uh, on the fear that people might abuse the use of chlorine in an attempt to chlorinate their water. People are resorting to boiling water, and uh, it's about options at hand. What can people do? Like you've talked about food being cooked at higher temperatures. In terms of water, what are some of the home solutions we can use to purify our water? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, key basics of water purification uh for the for water there are some water that could be you know look uh, not quite good you know so use uh alum and uh, there's also um, the aspect of sieving you know especially if there are particles in the water so you you put this thing sieve it get out these uh, uh, particles uh, that could be sieved then use alum to get it clean especially if it's brown, if it's not looking good. So along we move those to one side, then you pour the clean part out. Being clean is not the same as being safe. <laughs> Water could be sparkling, clean, looking good, or even chilled. It's not the same as being safe because there could still be organisms inside of it. So to get rid of those organisms, you now have to boil it. So if you, and the, the, the good thing is, that at 100, 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling temperature, that vibrio cholerae, uh, salmonella typhi, many of these organisms that you know cause waterborne diseases, they don't survive at that temperature. So when it's boiled, you've killed the organisms, right? So next is how do you store it? Because you don't boil and kill and pour it into you know uh, a, a jar that perhaps is also contaminated when it gets uh, you know chilled. So you 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 boil it and you keep it in a very clean location where you could also get water from it. Sometimes people use their cup, uh, they drink, they use the same cup, they dip into perhaps water they boiled. That could also contaminate it. So if you boil the water and uh, store it how do you get the water to drink using a cup or any, uh, a jug to dip inside of it is not good because you could also use the you know transfer certain organisms from the jug or the the cup back to the water that you've already boiled and killed some organisms you tr introduce organisms back to it so the the best is if there are some of these uh buckets or jars where you could put a tap that could work for those who can afford it. In the rural communities, the, 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 some use um, a clay pot, you know, so they put cover and all of that to, to, to get water from it. It's quite not the best, 
But there is this concept of asset-based community development. There is there's need for innovation, technologies that could work from place to place. There is no single recommendation that could work for everybody. So the local health department, the local works department, local governments and community organizations and community leadership themselves. Every community should have a health committee as required by the National Health Act 2014. So community health committees, which is an arm of community development uh, unions, you know, able to work out things that, you know, is, is, is workable in their location of ways to store this water and get it out without having to contaminate it. And that also works with hand washing. You know why we say that hand washing should be with a running water? You say soap, uh, wash uh, your hand with soap and running water. When you get water in a bowl and use soap to wash, uh, after washing off the, the germs, you throw the bowl away, pour clean water. When you throw it away, the organisms you've washed off are still lining on the body of that bowl. You pour clean water, the, uh, some of the organisms uh, that are uh, on the bowl gets back to the water. You dip your hand back to the water and pick it up again. So what you've simply done is perhaps debulking. You know, perhaps you have a million organisms before. After pouring, putting it, uh, you dip back your hands uh, that you're rinsing it. Uh, you've, you perhaps you'll be left to save 400,000 of such organisms. So you've, you've not quite removed it. So, but when it's a running water after washing, and if you have a tap, excellent. If you don't have a tap, someone could pour the water. You know, so as you're raising your hand, uh, getting it off, so it's leaving both your hand, leaving the surface, and you air dry. You know, I like to dry. If you have a dryer, excellent, the one one. But if you if not, you air dry it. If you go to a towel that is put somewhere to use uh, that been used before and rub it, you're also introducing additional organisms in your hands, except if it's. A, a, a toilet, a, a, a towel, I beg, I beg your pardon, you know, that has not been used, it's fresh, you use it and uh, and dispose it immediately. So these are so, some of the practices that we, we have to look at. But very importantly, boiling water is key, you know, drinking water. Even for those who don't have the access to kind of store it in a perfect place, but still when you boil, you've killed most of the organisms. If there is any cost that new organisms are introduced, they would not be as much as the one that's been there before. And let's also note that borehole is not essentially uh, entirely safe. Borehole picks water from the ground level, but you don't know what is being picked. There might be from huge there. seepage at ground level into borehole. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so because you, you also have the sucky ways and all of that, you know, where... Uh, uh, the sewage and other forms of waste from the environment gets down. So depending on uh, the, the, uh, what level the, the water is coming on, on the ground level, there are also organisms there. You know, it might not it, it will look clean, but <laughs> there are organisms that are being picked. If it's close to places you, you, you have, and of course within the city, almost every compound have borehole, and almost every compound also have uh, and so, so, so away. So these things are not, it, it doesn't quite make it entirely safe just because it's coming from the ground. It still has to uh, take measures to, to, to ensure that we kill the organisms. So boho is not, is, it looks clean, but if you take it to the lab, you might see, the, you might even see metals, you know, some of these solid, uh, you know, uh, minerals and all of that in different parts of the country also get to uh, contaminate uh, water. So it's very crucial. If we solve the problem of uh, water in Nigeria, we'll probably reduce the burden of uh, communicable diseases by over 70%. Now, Dr. Lars Eze has harped on the need for investments in wash facilities in Nigeria to afford Nigerians access to portable and safe water and also improved hygiene and sanitation facilities. 
He has also emphasized the need for this to be intensified in schools and public places to also curb the number of days lost by diarrheal diseases when children come down with these diseases. He says you cannot stop children from playing. It is core in their growth to play. But if you provide facilities where they can wash their hands at critical times, we can reduce the risk of contamination and the spread of cholera in Nigeria. He's also commended the Lagos State Government for its proactiveness. And now on the Lagos State Government, we return to the ex-handle of the Commissioner of Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, where we find more information that is advisable for the general public to take a listen to and learn something in that stead in curbing the spread of cholera. Now, you find that uh, infographics with the subject, what you need to know about cholera, understanding cholera, as uh, posted by Professor Abayomi. It says in understanding cholera, much like doctors reiterated, cholera is an acute diarrheal illness caused by infection of the intestines with vibrio cholerae bacteria. It is very dangerous and kills within a short period of time if not treated promptly. Now he goes on to say how cholera spreads, causes contaminated water and food, much like doctor has highlighted. Transmission, common in areas with inadequate water treatment, poor sanitation and insufficient hygiene. Now in recognition of symptoms, which uh, doctor would also expatiate on in a, in a bit, common symptoms, severe diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, rapid heart rate, low blood pressure, thirst, muscle cramp. Now timeline, it says the symptoms can appear within a few hours to five days after infection. Doctor also talked about asymptomatic cases where persons do not even display any of the aforementioned symptoms. Now, now before we look at the other information that's captured on this infographics, uh, Doctor, let's uh, take it up again from the, the symptoms. While some people may be symptomatic, others are asymptomatic. For asymptomatic persons, uh, it's talking about clinical diagnosis of what would constitute low blood pressure or rapid heart rate. Uh, how, how best can Nigerians uh, who are not presenting symptoms or have a fear access some medical service to ascertain if they are not down with the, uh, the, the virus or the bacteria rather, sorry. Yes, thank you, Vito. Uh, like, like many uh, infectious diseases, uh, is not everyone that comes in contact with the organism may get sick. So it's true for cholera, it's true for Ebola, it's true for COVID-19, it's true for Lassa fever, it's true for typhoid, it's true for many of uh, all these uh, conditions that are infectious. But why is important to know that, okay, people might be asymptomatic, the, that knowledge is important in the spread because somebody might have the organism and is not sick, but could transfer the same organism to someone else who might pick it up from a, an apparently looking, a healthy looking person, and the person will get sick, you know. So for those who are asymptomatic, there is really nothing they will have to do, you know, but we, we have to know that all of us, you know, are in together in interrupting the spread of any kind of infectious disease if everybody imbibes these practices it just helps to protect not only you but also the next person because you never know who it could get to so it should be a, you know a regular practice to to be clean to be hygienic and to uh, imbibe some of these recommended practices to prevent not only cholera you notice that during COVID 19 when people got scared <laughs> and we're now having hand washing facilities everywhere there was also action in cases of diarrhea diseases because of those practices after covid everybody relaxed again you know even the hand washing facilities sanitizer we are not hearing much about them again you know people relaxed and we also had a, a, an increase a, a yet again in, in diarrhea diseases so for those that are symptomatic, of course, these symptoms are not peculiar uh, to, to cholera. So, but the, the cholera, the level of, uh, you know, diarrhea could be very severe. It, it could be extremely severe. It's not just the regular one. Okay, uh, you pass two, five times in a day. And all. Cholera drains within a few hours. And that's what causes the death. 
when someone uh, those changes that happen within the stomach and the intestine you know when you eat and drink water there are enzymes in the body that help to break them down you know there is a mechanism through which the body absorbs water takes it into the system that's why it's not all the water or food you take that you get to pass uh, through urine or through uh, poo you know so the body takes in the water uses the one it, 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 it wants to use uh, for the body metabolism uh, you know and also when uh, cramp, you know uh, when food is broken down and all of that it gives uh, energy carbon four oxide and water the carbon four oxide was is what we breathe out water gets through the kidney system to the ureters and the bladder and all of that and and, and comes out as urine and the the remaining uh, food that is not used gets passed as 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 feces. So these are like the normal functioning of the system. But in the case of uh, cholera and uh, other uh, diarrhea diseases, the capacity for the body to function this way has been interrupted due to some toxins that are released uh, by this bacteria. So the water is no longer being absorbed for use in the body. So it gets in as it's entering the mouth, it's going to the stomach, it's leaking through through the anus almost immediately. You know, so and when water is not getting into the system, that's what causes the low blood pressure. So there is no adequate water. Our body has uh, about six liters of water, and and majority of our body weight actually uh, fluid. That's why when one begins to have diarrhea, you see somebody weighing 80 kg. Within hours, you begin to weigh 60 kg or even less, you know, so because water is not uh, being retained. So when that homeostasis uh, is in, in interrupted, it's really dangerous because it's not only water that is being lost, there are some uh, trace elements and, uh, you know, that is within the body, it's, it alters the body, uh homeostasis the sodium potassium uh, chlorine all those things uh help in maintaining the body system those things get interrupted and it affects the function of the heart the function of uh the liver the function of the the major organs of the body and if care is not taken uh, you know it leads to death so when those uh you say uh, you do a test uh, electrolytes uh, urea, creatinine, the entire body system is, is, is messed up. So it's really important to prevent this because for anybody that have had even mild diarrhea, you, you know how discomforting it could be. But cholera is, you know, never even the mildest form of it is, is, is not something anyone should experience. So is this loss of fluid, you know, if you don't have access, to begin to restore the fluid and not just the fluid, these electrolytes that the, that gives the body uh, organs ability to function, you know, is, is what usually uh, lead to death. It's worse among children, but it kills anybody of any age, you know, so that's, that's very crucial.